Let's go back in time. It's the year 2017. We were given Horizon Zero Dawn, Star Wars Battlefront 2, Resident Evil Biohazard. It was a great year for gaming in general, with some outstanding games coming into the fold. There was also another early access game which was coming into its own, still in its infancy, ready to be let out into the wild. And I don't think anyone at the time could have predicted this little early access game would later become a money-making giant of the gaming industry. And the name of that little early access title is Fortnite. Fortnite began life as a game called Fortnite Save the World, which was actually inspired by two insanely popular franchises in gaming at the time. The building genre with titles like Minecraft and Terraria, and then merging this style with shooter games such as the likes of Gears of War and Left 4 Dead. This fusion dance brought about the game we know today as Fortnite. The game is set on Earth. Without warning, an apocalyptic storm of biblical proportions inhales 98% of the world's population. If that wasn't enough, zombies are now attacking what little of the population are left, and the idea of the campaign was to complete missions to collect resources, so as to build up fortifications around defensible positions in order to withstand the storm and offer a safe haven for survivors. As you progress through the various missions of the game, you can then level up your character, weapons and support items, giving the player the edge in levels yet to be traversed. What also went live with this early access to the Save the World campaign was the now immensely popular Battle Royale feature in the game which pits you solo, duo, trio or up to a squad of 4 against 99 other players and much like traditional Battle Royale games, last person or group surviving is the winner. Now we all know what separated Fortnite from the rest of the Battle Royale games in the similar time frame and it was the ability to build as you played through the Battle Royale, creating your own cover or giving yourself the high ground to clutch that precious victory from other players, which had the world in a frenzy over this new way to play. You underestimate my power, don't try it. It wasn't long before Fortnite ex exploded into every household which had a gaming device attracting masses to the game lobbies and it is easy to see Epic Games had a clear winner in Fortnite. Um, Through time, Epic Games box. continually yeah, involved the Battle Royale platform, and altering me. the map, creating um, events and additional tasks for players to do while in the throes of a Battle Royale. Adding drivable vehicles and seasonal yeah, events such as Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving, you name it, Fortnite had appropriated it, which is both good and a bad thing. But for now, let's just focus on the good things which Fortnite has to offer. In an age where the politically correct goalposts keep moving, and it's suddenly a bad thing to have winners and losers in games, Fortnite still provides these elements gracefully. It doesn't tell you that you didn't succeed, but it does tell you that you placed whatever number you came out of the 100. And if you win, well, you really know you've won because it is celebrated very heavily. Fortnite also includes all demographics, with its wide selections of skins, which can be either unlocked or purchased through the item store, with the addition of weapon and harvesting tool customizations, coupled with different emote actions, make customization possibilities endless in terms of how you can portray yourself. The issue is with these endless levels of customization is that Epic Games and Fortnite have a fairly boring and unimaginative roster of original characters with the likes of Jonesy and Agent Peely. The Fortnite Battle Royale hardly has any real imagination behind its characters, let alone any real form of story driven content to back up the addition of these characters. So in order for Fortnite to combat this effectively, Epic Games appropriates characters from anything and everything else it can get its hands on in terms of IP. The current flavor is Star Wars, but you can purchase skins through the item shop for just about any character that tickles your fancy. And if it's not in the item shop now, check back regularly because the item shop is on rotation. Not only can Fortnite team not come, come up with anything interesting or original characters, they can't think of any different game modes. As such, have adapted and appropriated other popular games to entice people back into playing Fortnite such as the imposter mode, which is a direct copy of an indie game called Among Us. And alternatively, Fortnite looks to the players to create more interesting map and modes to entertain the player base. It is because of this serious lack in creativity and original thought that this is now being passed down through to the younger generations playing video games. I myself have two little monkeys who want to do what dad does and play video games. And don't get me wrong, 
It's a great way for us to spend time together, but teaching them the right and wrong way to navigate the digital jungle is tough enough, and there are many lessons to be learned along the way. And the more they play the game, the more I can see their imagination just fading away, because the all-encompassing focus becomes Fortnite, and I cannot help but see their imaginations diminish because of this. Fortnite is one of those games which we can all partake in and play, and this is due to its amazing reach and accessibility. But it's hard not to see my kids getting sucked into this hook, line and sinker from their own experiences with the game. They can see characters from all sorts of different universes and IPs come into this game and there is no rhyme or reason for the character to be here. It's just becoming the standard to accept what the game is giving you instead of questioning what's actually taking place. The secondary side to this is that they want every new skin that the game has to offer, as well as the battle pass every time it refreshes, and I can't help but think Fortnite is a sniper, and my children are the ammunition, and they are aiming right at my wallet. Now, I'm not saying Fortnite has no imagination at all, because that would be incorrect. And Fortnite does introduce its own characters from season to season. But again, these characters have no real story or reasoning for you as a player to be invested in them or want to unlock or obtain these characters. And the characters, regardless of whether they are Fortnite originals or appropriated from other IPs, have no real character defining traits other than its aesthetic look. Now don't get me wrong here, I'm as guilty as anyone in terms of indulging myself and purchasing skins in Fortnite for some of my favourite characters for all sorts of different platforms. And this is something Fortnite is amazingly good at doing, is creating hype for you to keep playing so that you can unlock a variant of your skins or a different look to your character or a complete quest to be rewarded with additional skins and admittedly it is very easy to quickly become sucked into this vortex of quests skins and other aesthetics unlockables for your customization pleasure but ultimately that's all it is aesthetics you're offered no real reward for your money and time that you tip into this game aside from what you can make your character look like now, I see this as a positive and a negative, the positive being it keeps people on a level playing field. There is no pay to win feature here. Now this personally I think is a great thing, because for the most part, it keeps the player base honest, and you know you died because of either a bad call on your part, or because you were just plainly outskilled in the game. The negative to this is, well, what sets me apart from everyone else? And the answer here is, nothing. Because really, Fortnite doesn't want you to be separated from the rest of the player base. You're just as deserving as the next person who decided to give Epic Games money. That's it. And that, friends, is what Epic Games and Fortnite all comes back to, is making money. But who are we kidding? This is the aim of every business out there. However, for the untold amount of people playing Fortnite and tipping money into Epic Games, I honestly thought Fortnite might have grown more than what it actually has. And I can only speak for myself here, but I think we as a player base deserve a bit better. The real crime here is that Fortnite is so good at keeping itself engaged with the player base that it has the potential to rob players of far better and more imaginative games experiences out there. Games with original stories, characters to grow, develop and invest in, and this impacts the younger generation of gaming. And on this, I can speak from experience. Getting my monkeys to try something other than Fortnite is hard. And I understand why, but when you take a step back and see Fortnite for what it actually is, it's nothing really that special. It's just a great way to offer you as a player minimal evolution from a gameplay perspective while you keep tipping money into its flavor of the month. From the rotation of skins, to borrowed characters from different universes, and unimaginative minimal story at best, the game Fortnite Saves the World had so much potential and such a great and unique twist for a game, which was drowned out by its battle royale setting and the opportunity to appropriate other characters and charge players for the experience. It's hard to see Fortnite as anything else other than a place where the imagination goes to die.